Those are annoying. Oh, I'm out of bait now. It's a bait. All right, so that is 110% glassy darter. The problem is it's surrounded by like literally a thousand chubs. We're gonna keep trying because that, that's a cool species right there. A glassy darter oh heck yeah so this is a glassy darter ethiosma vitrium looks like a johnny but it has very uh you can kind of see at certain angles very fluorescent little spots along the midline of the back of its body that is so cool i don't even know where to start talking about this fish uh, so this fish is very adapted for life buried in the sand as you can tell its head is kind of wedge shaped uh that is so it can like push down in the sand and like squirrel into the sand and uh, it's pectoral fins. Most pectoral fins you see on fish, uh, large ones, like sculpins and candy darters, therefore planting the fish down in strong current, but not glassies, not necessarily glassies. Glassies prefer shifting sand habitats, and they will use those pectoral fins to help bury sand over the rest of their body, which is really cool. Very unique species. Actually, you know what? This is a monotypic subgenus. Um, it belongs to the subgenus Iowa, Oh, look at those fluorescent spots in the back. That is so cool. Of course, it's colored like sand, too. It blends right into the sand. Yeah, right in. Um, but yeah, there's only four species of darters in the world. Over, out of the over 200 species of darters, there's only four of them that are monotypic subgenuses. This is it. Ooh, probably the most unique species in Virginia. Also, their spawning habitat is really weird. Um, so, of course, they prefer to live in shifting sand habitat like that but they spawn in swift rocky habitat like that. And uh, they are egg attachers, and they will actually congregate in the hundreds uh, to plant their eggs. And the males turn really dark when they're spawning. And uh, also something kind of unique, both the males and females get tubercles. Also, before we release it, something else I forgot to mention about this species. Um, if you'll notice, it has literally the tiniest mouth in existence. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's other darters that have tinier mouths, but this is like one of the tiniest mouths ever um and it uses that mouth to eat exclusively midge larva so catching on hook and line can be a uh, kind of tricky when well, you don't have access to midges but they'll pretty much take anything like such a tiny mouth that is cool all right glassy darter is showing the little uh aquarium thing right there well the the photo tank not really a photo tank but i'm, I'm just calling it a photo tank we're gonna try and catch a johnny now This photo tank is super scuffed up on the sides, uh, but there's our Johnny darter, Ethiosma nigrum, next to our glassy darter, Ethiosma vitrium. Oh, but yep, yeah, the way you can tell these two apart is that, of course, when you look down, one has much larger pectoral fins than the other, like proportionally, and then of course those iridescent blue sides in the glassy. But you can't really see those from that angle; they only show up at certain angles. Oh, that's cool. Ethiosma nigrum. The, the other darter in here that looks like nigrum is potostome, uh, the, the riverweed darter. But riverweeds, well, let me check. Yeah, I know this is a Johnny. Riverweeds have almost glassy like um, 
pectoral fins, but they're just obviously not glassies. Their mouth isn't nearly as tiny as the glassy darter. So tiny. Oh, that's cool though. Hey, two targets down. Nice. Cutlips down there, we're gonna try and catch it. Uh, hopefully, usually when I try and go after cutlips, they go after the split shot instead of the bait because I think it's a Chinese snail. It's like, ooh, a Chinese snail! 10 times food! No, just, they just go after the bait. You know, these cutlips are literally impossible to catch. Like, every time like, the bait even gets near them, uh, it, it just gets immediately pummeled by a bunch of chubs. And now I think the cutlips I was going after, I think it's like scared every time it sees the bait because it's always going to get pummeled by a bunch of chubs. I think I'm about to give one the cut lip. Like, I remember the chubs used to be bad here, but I didn't think they were anywhere near this bad. Like, they are horrible. They're trying to give rights uh, to these GMO creatures they're creating so that we don't have rights. No, your technocracy is dead on arrival. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, we caught, we only caught three fish today. Caught a glassy darter, a giant darter, and a rizoside dace. Um, unfortunately, the chubs are just, I've never seen chubs this aggressive and abundant in my entire life like every time i put a bait down in front of a fish it would just get absolutely pummeled like chubs just come out of everywhere and just uh knock away the fish that i'm trying to catch um fishes that i saw down there northern hog sucker that was one white shiner um the roanoke hog sucker the rusty side sucker the roanoke darter but uh just the chubs they were just Tomorrow, I did get here kind of late, so it might not be a complete video, but tomorrow is definitely going to be a whole day of fishing, and I'm going to be doing fish, some fishing tonight uh, somewhere else in the drainage, hoping for rusty side suckers and Roanoke hog suckers. I don't anticipate any problems with either of those. But for this video, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to check out some more snorkel fishing videos, I got to play this year. But yeah, I'll catch you next time.